Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Jasmine Mund. I'm a mechanical design engineer with a key interest in the fusion industry. Today is Wednesday, the 19th of February, 2025, and I'm here to give you your fusion news update this week. And now onto the key headlines for today's episode. One, a retired coal plant to become a 350 megawatt stellarator fusion power facility. Two, Neutron isotropy measurements validate shared flow stabilized Z-pinches for stable thermal fusion. 3. Canadian nuclear laboratories expand clean energy siting invitation to include fusion, hydrogen and battery storage. And make sure you stay till the end because as usual I have quite a few interesting bonus stories that you definitely don't want to miss out on. 1. A retired coal plant to become a 350 megawatt stellarator fusion power facility. Our first story comes from World Nuclear News and our FIA member Type 1 Energy and the Tennessee Valley Authority, who've unveiled plans to convert a decommissioned coal plant into a 350 megawatt stellarator fusion facility, aptly named Infinity 2. This initiative builds on Project Infinity, launched in 2024 to test Infinity 1, a stellarator prototype located at TVA's Bull Run Fossil Plant. By reusing infrastructure from a retired coal site, the project aims to accelerate clean energy development while reducing costs tied to greenfield construction. Accelerators are distinct from traditional tokamak devices in that they twist the plasma containment ring, which can help mitigate some of the instabilities linked to uniform toroidal designs. According to Type 1 Energy CEO Christopher Mowry, TVA's expertise in operations, maintenance, engineering, licensing, and even project planning will be vital to Infinity 2's success. The partnership leverages TVA's long history in large-scale energy production, ensuring a smoother path towards integrating fusion power into existing grids. In addition, Type 1 Energy has licensed superconducting cable technology from Commonwealth Fusion Systems to build advanced magnets for Infinity 2. These magnets are crucial for achieving the magnetic fields required to confine the plasma which must reach temperatures far hotter than the sun's core. If Infinity 2 meets its performance milestones, it could signal a new era of large-scale zero-carbon fusion energy, while breathing fresh life into a coal facility that once symbolised the fossil fuel era. 2. Neutron isotropy measurements validate sheared flow stabilised Z-pinches for stable thermal fusion. Our second story draws on reporting from phys.org and research by Zap Energy focusing on a key finding in its fuse device, the near isotropy of neutrons produced during fusion. In fusion, isotropic neutron energy indicates a stable thermal plasma, exactly the condition needed for high energy gains and eventual power production. Anisotropic emissions, by contrast, often signal beam target interactions that can limit the scalability of the system. In a newly published paper in Nuclear Fusion, SAP researchers detail how detectors placed around the fuse device measured neutrons from 433 plasma shots. The data revealed that the neutrons were nearly uniform in all directions, strong evidence that the system is producing thermal fusion rather than relying on beam target reactions. This is significant because thermal fusion scales exponentially with higher currents and temperatures, while beam target processes are notoriously hard to scale to net energy output. ZAP's sheared flow stabilized Z-pinch departs from older pinch approaches, such as the 1950s era Zeta experiments, which ultimately produced beam target neutrons and proved unscalable. By postponing magnetic instabilities through sheared flows, ZAP's device maintains a plasma in thermodynamic equilibrium for a longer du duration. According to chief scientist and co-founder Yuri Shumlak, demonstrating isotropy means we can double the size of the plasma and expect the same sort of equilibrium to exist. Future tests on the higher powered Fuse Q device aim to validate this approach at larger scales, potentially moving ZAP one step closer to net energy fusion. Three, Canadian Nuclear Laboratories expands clean energy siting rotation to include fusion, hydrogen and battery storage. Our third story comes from Fuel Cells Wax, detailing how Canadian Nuclear Laboratories, or CNL, has broadened its SMR siting invitation program to encompass a wider range of clean energy technologies. Now known as the Clean Energy Siting Program, the initiative welcomes vendors and developers of fusion-based systems, hydrogen production, battery storage, and other innovative energy solutions, in addition to traditional small modular reactors, or SMRs. 
CNL's goal is to support Canada's net zero objectives while providing an industry-friendly environment to build and test prototype facilities. Jack Craig, CNL's president and CEO, emphasizes that no one solution will be sufficient to address the scale and urgency of, of climate change challenges. Therefore, complementary energy options must work in tandem. Meanwhile, Atomic Energy of Canada Limited, or AECL, the federal crown corporation overseeing these sites, underscores that this expanded invitation is just another example of Canada's unique approach to collaborative public-private partnerships. Under the updated programme, prospective projects must still navigate four phases, now retooled to foster deeper collaboration between CNL and participating companies. The Chalk River Laboratories and White Shell Laboratory sites, both managed by CNL on behalf of AECL, are potential hosts. While the expanded programme does not automatically grant access to CNL's research facilities, CNL is open to this on a case-by-case -case basis. Overall, this broader invitation represents a strategic move to accelerate the deployment of next-generation clean energy solutions, including fusion, within Canada's innovative nuclear research framework. And now on to the bonuses. In a historic moment for the fusion community, French President Emmanuel Macron and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi toured the ITER site in southern France, the first time in two decades that heads of state have personally visited the groundbreaking international project. Greeted by ITER Director General Pietro Barabaschi, they saw the massive engineering components and heard how ITER remains a model of science diplomacy, uniting nations in pursuit of star power energy here on Earth. As Prime Minister Modi noted afterwards on social media, ITER represents a commendable step towards sustainable and limitless clean energy. Meanwhile, the European Parliament hosted a high-profile hearing to address lagging private investment in European fusion ventures compared to the US and China. Officials emphasised that a stable and predictable regulatory framework combined with clearer funding pathways could bolster Europe's leadership. Many anticipate the upcoming European fusion strategy could harmonise national efforts and reduce red tape, making Europe a more competitive force in commercial fusion development. And finally, we're really excited to remind everyone that the annual FIA conference in 2025 is just around the corner. It's taking place on February 25th to 26th in Washington, DC. The conference will bring together leaders in government, industry, academia, and research to discuss practical ways of accelerating fusion's commercial readiness. Registration is nearly at capacity, so be sure to secure your spot soon if you'd like to join the conversation. Registration information will be at the link in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you did, don't forget to drop a like, comment or subscribe. If you'd like to know more about any of these stories or bonuses mentioned today, the links will all be in the description below. You can also follow our Fusion News Extra podcast for a more in-depth look into the topic of fusion energy. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.